Hey guys, Mars here. What's going on? Um, see, I always, I never get this stuff adjusted before I get on and then I'm all jacked up. Oh, that's even worse. Okay, let's see. My midget. <laughs> little people, little people. Hey Ernestine, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Thursday, it's weekend eve, because the weekend kind of starts on Friday. For those of you guys who are jumping on with me live, I welcome you and I appreciate you and I just simply ask you to do me one favor and that is to share this out. Um, we're talking about women who love too much and specifically tonight we're talking about the men who choose women who love too much. And so for those of you um, who may be catching this on the replay, I appreciate you making that investment as well. Um, this topic is one that I don't think we give enough um, energy to. And I think that's where a lot of relationship problems come into to play is because um, as we're going to find out tonight, some of the characteristics that we often want to um, and hold in high esteem as women are the very things that make us vulnerable to the men who prey on women who love too much. So, um, that's going to be the topic tonight. And for those of you, if it's your first time joining in on one of my live streams, I welcome you. I thank you for um, checking it out. My name is Marcy Batiste. I am an, a public speaker. I'm an author. And I own a company called Bankable Success Advisors, which is a leading recovery solutions provider. And one of the things that I specialize in is what I call curing emotional bankruptcy. And that's the vacancy that we all feel that hold us hostage to past fears, flaws and failures, traumas. Um, and so really truly finding the source for recovery and um, really being able to raise the bar on what, in, what recovery looks like, what healing looks like. And um, for me, my, my, my whole thing is I just want to um, lead, lead women to be able to help them embrace their star power. I want to invite you all to join me on this journey, this mission to to lead 1,000 rising stars as they they find their voices, they find healing, they discover mm -hmm. their star power, and more importantly, that they truly, truly, truly learn to embrace their star power and understand how truly amazing they are. And when we talk about recovery solutions, we're talking about dealing with all the stuff that in particular as women we want to brush aside we want to forget about we want to say oh i'm just moving on and yeah, i wish it was that simple but it's not but um with the right tools and the right strategies and a support system built around you which is the importance of the raising the bar community of women 1000 women bonded together with a common objective to let their light shine and supporting the the shine of another you know not trying to feel like um, you live in a world of lack and that there's not enough light for all of us to shine because there certainly is and so 2018 is about raising the bar it's about letting your light shine and it's about embracing your star power thousand women it's gonna be freaking amazing and I thank you guys for joining in tonight and this subject the men who choose you um, really is about we've we've invested this week um, I'm on a 30 books in 30 weeks uh, mission to share I always you know I share with you guys all the time that when I get better my clients get better and um, that's so true and being able to invest the next 30 weeks of pulling from not only my own personal development library but raising the bar on the content that I have in that but also um, being able to share some messages and some takeaways from a number of um, self-help and personal development um, books that have helped me along the way that my mentors have, have blessed me with, have gifted me with, um, and that I've made financial investments in because I feel like you can't invest in your own development enough, particularly as it, com as it, as it relates to recovering from past traumas. Um, domestic violence, abuse of all forms, um, insecurity, self-esteem, obesity, molestation, you name it. And we have to heal those pains and deal with the fears, flaws, and failures that accompany them. And so this 
week. Uh, we're on week two of 30 books in 30 weeks, and this week's book is Women Who Love Too Much by Robin Norwood, and it is one of my favorite, most game-changing books ever. And it's so much so that it's been hard for me to find what seven subjects I really want to pull from this book and share with you guys. And so tonight's, last night we talked about um, having good sex in bad relationships and what does that look like? How do you how do you get there? And more importantly, how do you escape those kinds of behaviors and stop making those same mistakes? And so tonight I want to talk to you. And like, I, like I've been sharing all week and I want to take a moment to reiterate, don't get hung up on the title. Hey, Marcus, it says women who love too much, but there are men who love too much too. And there are women who take advantage of them, just like there are men who take advantage of the women. And so this message is from a woman's perspective because that's where my expertise is. But I have um, several male clients too. And um, believe me, we study from this book as well um, because it's about emotion. It's about emotional baggage and it's about emotional bankruptcy. And it's about balancing out that account. And it's about understanding why you choose the relationships that you choose on both sides. And so tonight's message, I really want to talk about the men who choose the women who love too much. And one of the things that I want to point out is that some of the characteristics of, hey, Yanni, of women who love too much um, are characteristics that in and of themselves are characteristics that a lot of people strive for. They sound great, but you have to learn to manage, manage your behaviors. You have to learn to manage your tendencies. And when things are left unchecked is when we get into problems. And that's why carrying that emotional bankruptcy, dealing with those past fears, flaws, and failures is so important because if you don't deal with what happened in the past, what led you to the space that you are, then you will continue to make the same mistakes. And so good characteristics lead to bad results because you didn't know how to manage them. Does that make sense? So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about things like um, women who love too much are often perceived as strong women. Oh, she's so strong. She's so resourceful. Um, she really gets things done. I mean, these are how these women are described. Um, she gets things done. She's so comforting. She's so warm. She's so sensitive. She's a great cook. She just makes everything seem like it's going to be all right. Oh, she's so organized. She's just amazing. This is my favorite one. And this is the one that really, really, in me being completely transparent with you guys, this is the one that got me in trouble. She's so accommodating. She's so accommodating. And like I said, strong, resourceful, fixers, make people feel good. Hey, Daryl, um, stable, um, in my case, made good money, but it was that accommodating. So when I talk to you guys about them being good characteristics of a person, but being mismanaged, accommodation is one of the things that um, if left unchecked, can go all the way wrong. And the thing of it is, is men who prey on women who love too much know these things about them. As a matter of fact, they're attracted to them. So when they have a conversation with you, they can sense within nanoseconds, oh, that's what exactly what I'm looking for. And we become, as women who love too much, me being reformed from those behaviors, um, we become whatever they need us to become. And so that's that accommodation piece, um, being resourceful. Whatever he needed, I made it happen. It didn't matter what sacrifice was to me. Oh, you need me to take some money out of my 401k to help you? Okay. No. If left unchecked. Good behaviors lend to bad results, and that's what happened to me. So I was very accommodating. Uh, many of the women that I work with are very accommodating. They're very resourceful. They're very, when you look at them, you're like, oh my God, like she's such a strong woman. And here's the other thing that oftentimes is said about women who love too much. Well, why is she single? Well, that's the woman who loves too much that gets in recovery 
and then starts learning, oh, this is not good for me. Those, those characteristics were not managed well. And so I was getting bad results from good characteristics. And so oftentimes you'll find women who are successful, smart, strong, resilient, powerful, um, comforting, warm, tender, sensitive, but they're no longer as accommodating because they've learned to manage the accommodation based on what's in their best interest. And so men who, who, who love women, who prey on women, and I'm going to keep saying prey on, and remember, I'm saying men who prey on women, but there are women who prey on men with low self-esteem and insecurities as well. And we just call them sugar daddies. Okay. Cause y'all know I'm about to keep it real, right? I'm not even, I'm not even trying to make this stuff up. I don't have to, it's real. Um, and so there are women who will use their, um, their attributes for gain and not have the other person, the man in this case, um, best interest at heart. And so, like I said, we tend to call those, those guys sugar daddies and the women who are like that sugar babies. So it sounds a little bit cuter, but it's still ugly results, bad results, bad behaviors. Um, so men who love too much, why do they choose you? Uh, men, why do they choose women who love too much? Sorry, I said that backwards. Um, they choose you because that's exactly what they're looking for. A lot of times they'll have a history of abuse, um, alcohol abuse, drug abuse. Um, what else? Um, just obsessive compulsive behaviors, um, workaholics a lot of times, narcissists. Um, I know there are some major sports addicts out there. And these extreme behaviors are reasons to disengage from the relationship. And so then women who love too much, they can string you along um, and say, oh, well, you know, I'm just going out with the boys. Oh, you know, it's, it's sports on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh yeah, and don't forget Monday night football. And then I don't know what happens when baseball season starts or whatever, but... So that's, that's, those are signs. And so they prey on these women who are um, very, very accommodating. Oh, that's okay. Oh no, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Um, but she makes, she's a good homemaker. She's a good provider. She's a great woman on paper. She's a great woman behind the, behind the scenes. Um, but the men who prey on women like that are oftentimes narcissistic. Everything is about them. And so women who love too much are accommodating to that. And I'm okay making it be all about you and nothing about me. I'm okay with you not ever asking questions about me or my day or my life and only just me revolving my world around you. Like, okay, that's that's fine. And those are behaviors that are common in relationships such as this. So the men who choose and who prey on women who love too much have very, very distinctive um, tastes and drivers. Um, they're always extra. Like, well, I was thinking when I was, um, I was thinking about what I wanted to share on this subject. And like, that was the thing. Like my relationships with um, my three, is it three, four? My four most destructive relationships they were all just extra, extra everything. Like there was no middle ground. There was never no gray area. So the fun was always extra. The parties were always extra. The celebrations were always extra. They were always the life of the party. Very, very charismatic. People genuinely liked to be around them. And then as a woman who loved too much, I looked good in that situation because I accommodated to all of those behaviors. Oh, you want to have 700 people at the house? Not a problem. I'll make food for all your friends while you go out. Um, really, really, like when I look back in hindsight, and the only thing I'm, I'm so thankful for now is that I know better. So now when I recognize either that type of an individual in my life, I can eradicate it. Um, but more importantly, that I know how to avoid it. Um, 
and I'm very, very strategic about it. And that was a hard lesson to learn. And so those are the things like, as you like, like I always say, as you get better, you start to do better and then you make better decisions and therefore you get better results. Um, one of the things that always stood out to me too, was that, um, women who love too much are always like saying things like, Oh, he needs me. But in reality, she craves being needed. Like if she's not needed, if she doesn't feel needed, she doesn't feel complete. Like her value and her self-worth is tied up in whether or not someone else needs her, whether it's her kids or significant other or whatever. Um, and she, and that, like, that's the driver. Do you need me? Is there something I can fix for you? Can I fix your life? Like, dude, you're not Iyanla. No, you can't fix his life. Stop it. You can't fix him. He's not ready to be fixed. He doesn't want to be fixed. And so we tend to, women who love too much tend to attract narcissists and men who um, just really, um, like they, they want to be catered to. They want the world to revolve around them. They want all that extra, extra, extra. And the more extra they can be and the bigger extra they can look in front of their friends, then whew, that's really the big win right there. If if she can cater to me and make me look good in front of my friends and she makes good money and she's smart and don't let her be pretty too because that's just, it's just too much. Like it's just too much. But if you're a woman who loves too much, like you've busted your ass for all these years to become all of these things that you thought everyone wanted you to be they wanted you to be smart they wanted you to be pretty they wanted you to be resourceful hey kathy hey casey they wanted you to be organized and a good provider and supportive and like that's the thing women who love too much they're sitting there going i'm a good woman why can't i keep a relationship aha uh -huh. that's why you can't keep the relationship because you are not finding um, partners, you're finding um, predators. And so they prey on these particular characteristics, the strong, the resourceful, the smart, all of those great characteristics, but with moderate self-esteem, if not low self-esteem, some insecurities, and a woman who desires to be needed and her desire to be needed is her driver like if I don't feel needed I don't feel complete if I can't do something for someone else I feel empty and the predators will prey on those behaviors and those characteristics and like I swear, like I used to, I used to be so guilty that like, I'm telling you guys, like I, I don't share stuff that I don't know about. Like this was me, right? Like, oh no, I need to help take care of his kids. And, um, and I was buying, I was a couple of exes bought their kids school clothes, like to like, I can't even begin to tell y'all all the, all the stuff that I did in the name of love because I was a woman who loved too much and I loved the wrong people because I loved people who were predators, not partners. Get that. It's a, he's a predator, not a partner. She's a predator, not a partner. Remember, we just call them sugar babies and sugar daddies, but it's the same thing. They're preying on these needs. And my whole thing was, well, if I don't, you know, if I'm not here for him because he needs me, if I'm not here for him, then, oh, what will he do? Girl, bye. <laughs> Girl, bye. Well, you know what he'll do? He gonna call the next one or the last one or the one before that who was doing the, all the same things you're doing until she learned better and started doing better for herself. He's never going to be without one because he's always got one on deck because the biggest, the biggest factor for a woman who loves too much, the biggest fear that a man who preys on those kind of women has is that she's going to learn to do better for herself. 
that somewhere along the line, she's going to learn to put herself first. Somewhere along the line, she's not going to be so accommodating. And the funny thing happens when you stop being accommodating and you're in a relationship with a predator and not a partner is he no longer needs you. And that's a scary thing if you're a woman who loves too much. It's very scary because we have so much of our identity tied up to that. And, you know, that was something I was really, really, really so guilty of. And the thing of it is, is even when you know better, it's such a deeply rooted um, part of your personality that you have to be ever vigilant about it. You can't let your guard down for a second. You have to assess going into relationships. Is this a partner or a predator? And that's the takeaway from tonight. Like whether you're a woman who loves too much or whether you're a man who loves too much, when you enter into these relationships and your, your objective, your driver is, and your need is to be needed. Look at the person that you're getting in relationship with. Are they someone who's reciprocating any of that? Are they strong for you? Do they have your back? Are they providing for you? Are they resilient for you? Are they accommodating to you? And if the answer is no and that street only goes one way, they're a predator, not a partner. Get that. Get that. And stop trying to make relationships out of these. these, these. I don't even know what you call it. But it's not a relationship. It's like... This is what I used to say about one of my exes. I used to say, well, I still say it, actually. I do still say it. I said, he sent in a really good representative. He was the model boyfriend. And then I saw the real him. And what I saw was a lot of these characteristics. And what I saw in me was a tendency to backtrack. And then I got smart and I said... Oh, no, 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 no. You know better, boo-boo. You know how that story ends. And I ended the chapter. And I closed the book. And I walked out of the relationship. And that's the difference, you guys. When you realize that you're in... You've made a mistake. You've chosen someone who chose you for another reason. And, and oftentimes, I know that was the case for me, like... I didn't even choose them. I used to call it the, the you like me syndrome. If you like me, I like you. If you like me, I like you. If you choose me, I'll choose you back. I think that was a song, something like that. But that, it's so real, y'all. It's so real. And it's so painful when you find yourself in it. And I can laugh about it now and I can joke about it now because um, I'm healed. And it doesn't hurt me anymore. I'm not embarrassed about the choices that I made in some relationships anymore. And um, the biggest thing I can tell you is if you would describe yourself with these characteristics, strong, resourceful, accommodating, um, compromising, um, you know, organized, caring, they're all great qualities. But when you invest that level of emotion make sure you're getting a return on your investment so when we talk about what causes emotional bankruptcy being a woman who loves too much being a man who loves too much creates emotional bankruptcy you're automatically going to be upside down every single day and so when you find yourself in these don't waste a whole bunch of time being embarrassed don't waste a whole bunch of time trying to figure it out don't waste don't waste any time trying to fix it because it's that fix it I need to fix it attitude that got you stuck with that person in, in the first place this is what I want you to do I want you to say you know what I saw Marcy's video and I remember her saying something about a predator am I being preyed upon am I being taken for granted am I being used for my resourcefulness is my emotional investment being reciprocated is there any kind of return on that investment ask yourself that and then when the answer is no be prepared to make a change
and walk away. Hey, Erica, what's going on, cuz? Hey, Jason. Um, be prepared to walk away. It's okay. Like, you're going to make mistakes. It's all right. Deeply, we all just, we all want the same thing. We all want to be loved. But you have to understand that love is an emotion. And an emotion given to another person, person then becomes an investment. You're not going to go invest your money in things that you know are going to create a loss. Well, if you gamble, maybe. But even then, you got some hope for, <laughs> you got some hope. And at some point, you still, even in gambling, say, you know what? Maxed out, tapped out. I'm not giving no more money to the house. And that's what you have to do with these types of relationships, you guys. You got to stop giving money to the house. Realize it's a predator, not a partner. Take the L, cut the loss, move the hell on. It's, it's that simple. But it's also very, very painful. So I'm not even going to, I'm not going to fake it. But that's why they have people like me who help you walk through that process and teach you the strategies to do it and can have those really, really blunt conversations with you. And at the end of the day, it's not my decision for you to make a change for your life. It's not my decision for you to, um, even though I'll teach you better, I'll show you better, I'll give you better. It's not my um, job to make you do better. I can only provide you the tools. You have to use them. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You know all those things. They all apply. But at the end of the day, if he's a predator, not a partner, cut the L. You got to cut it. <laughs> that kind of thing, right? Okay, so that's my message for tonight. Um, the women, the men who choose women who love too much and there are identifying characteristics. If you missed any of that, make sure you put this on rewind, check out the replay, or jump over to YouTube, pop the subscribe button, re-listen to it, take some notes, inbox me if you have questions, because I want everybody to be in happy, healthy, whole relationships and not fragments. Because as one of my mentors said, if we can accomplish this much when we're broken, Imagine how amazing the world would be if we functioned from a place of, of wholeness, right? So let your light shine, raise the bar. Um, coaching program, 60 days laser coaching program. Um, I'm in the, oh my gosh, week long one-on-ones with all of the new clients. They're amazing. They refill my cup. I love these ladies and I am so stinking pumped about this program, you guys. If you need information about it, you can hit my website or you can always inbox me too. But that starts on the 15th and um, I extended the discount on pricing all the way until the 15th. So that's open. Um, like I said, hit the YouTube. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Um, women who love too much, be back tomorrow night for day, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's the 12th. Day 12 of my 30 weeks in 30, <laughs> I can't talk, 30 books in 30 weeks. It's been a long day. I've been up since like four o'clock this morning. So um, in the meantime, in between time, guys, I appreciate you. I love you. I respect you. Um, and in the meantime, thanks for living life on Mars. We'll talk soon.